Hey guys. It's been five years since I built this machine. I've used it a few times now, but it's had a few flaws as well. So I've done some upgrades to it. It'll be easier to explain everything in a video than to type it all out in a description. This machine gets lifted with my hoist and set on a cart and then stored in an outdoor closet when it's not on my welding table. The wires and cords are all over the place. So I clean those up and put the control panel on an arm that hinges. There's an aluminum shield to keep any lead splatter from getting on the screen. Same for the PID temperature control. One of the big issues with the machine is that the smaller cylinder that was on it moved the arm too abruptly. The arm would come up and bounce at the top of the stroke. That would throw off the counter and the indexing was bad when it would get up underneath of the spouts. It also stressed the stop there and broke it off. So now I've gone to a larger cylinder, which I had on the sizing machine. There's another video of that. The difference is that the large cylinders have cushions on the ends. So you can adjust an Allen screw on each end and slow down the movement at the end. And then when you use the flow control valves and then set the pressure where it needs to be, it gives you enough control to make the machine move smoothly. So now I'm down to 25 PSI to operate it. And then with all the adjustments, the machine returns to the top of the stroke gently. So I had to build a mount for the back of this big cylinder and then turn an adapter and create a new mount to the arm here to get that all to work out. Another problem I was having is getting the screw plate to move where it needed to go. Sometimes it would bounce back and forth as the machine tapped. So to fix that, I've added steel weight here, and then a stop so it can't move too far. And then there's also another stop to keep it from closing too far when it goes back under the spout. found out that dropping the bullets hot on top of each other caused them to dent. So now I've dropped bullets into a coffee can with water and then the sprues fall into a basket. That seems to work pretty well. Also my spout was plugging up for the lead so I opened it up by two drill bit sizes or two sixty fourths. So now I get more flow out of the bottom. I can remove this plate which has a channel in it and then two individual holes so that it fills both sides of the mold. I ran the machine last night and did 860 bullets in a couple hours along with playing with the machine. It takes NOE molds that are out of Utah. The next one I'm going to run is a 175 grain flat nose. It's a Seiko 315 copy that I use in a 3030 for lever action silhouette. It also works on a 30 odd 6. Here's some lead ready to go in. Some of it is range scrap, some are wheel weights. This pot will hold 100 pounds of lead inside, 
and then you know the weight of the machine so hence the frame that I can put on it and lift it with the hoist and get it off of my work table here for now it just gets clamped down lightly so it doesn't slide across the table as it's moving here's what I cast last night the machine isn't as fast as some but the whole point was to let the machine do the work instead of putting the wear and tear on my hands and wrists so I can sit here and sort through bullets and feed the machine and let it do the work my pistol bullets get powder coated and then run through the automated sizing machine the rifle bullets get aluminum gas checks and traditional wax lube here's the switch for home position so this will trigger it to start the cycle over and to pour the lead on the PLC I can adjust timing on almost every aspect of the machine so it's pretty easy to dial in So there weren't very many bullets that I had to throw back last night now that everything is working properly. I do have this fan on here to cool the mold if need be, but so far it's cool enough inside here with the swamp cooler running for ventilation that I haven't had to run it. This machine is inspired by a, I believe a magma master caster if I remember correctly that I ended up building it from scratch and then using the molds that I prefer so this plate on the side was kept from the previous arm but I took off the bracket that held the old cylinder and just used a piece of flat stock to add on to the bracket that I built for the new one. Well, that's it for now. If you have any questions, post them up. See you on the next video.